TV KPM Dede TV KPM You are now watching Success SPM 2021 together with me Sean Steven as your host and I want to make sure that you always follow the SOPs in place as a very very important reminder because we want to fight COVID-19 we want to make sure that the we can flatten the curve aside from that also make sure you wear your face mask wash your hands regularly with both water and soap use hand sanitizer and when you among other people or when you in public places make sure you and other people are at least 1 meter apart and use your my suggestor to scan the QR code wherever you go uh, also today will be a very interesting topic for the subject of english literature if you want to find out what it is or more importantly you want to find out who the teacher will be uh, teaching today let's check out her profile And with us today we have Puan Asima also known as Puan A. Hi. Today what is the topic we'll be discussing today? For today we are going to specifically look at a short story. Mm -hmm. It is titled Turning 30. Turning 30. Written by Min Fong Ho. All right. So maybe you could tell us or share with us what's interesting about today's topic. Ah, all right. Um to me Turning 30 is a wonderful text. Mhm. Mm It's a short story that teaches us plenty of moral value yeah and reminds us to be kind to one another mm -hmm. to be compassionate to everyone around us. All right, sounds like a very very interesting short story indeed. But before we continue how about we practice some SOPs? Let's go or oh, let's head over to the table. Let's go. All right, I'll be over on this side. And as you can see that uh, we have the hand sanitizer over here could you also uh, could you kindly uh, use some hand sanitizer All right so I'll sure. go first Yes please All right Ladies uh, first of course Sarali Sarali yes Okay and uh, for those of you watching home obviously our distance is definitely more than 1 meter apart actually I'll actually like to uh, invite Puan A to go over to a right. position so that we can start our lesson but before we even begin our lesson Of course we have six amazing guests who are with us today and they are from SMK Convent Ipoh Pera. Hi everyone. There we go. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to start off first by mentioning your name. Please introduce yourself. So we're going to start first with Sankirtana. Good evening everybody. My name is Sankirtana and I'm currently a Form 5 student. All right, thank you so much. We're going to move on next to Esther. Hi, my name is Esther. I'm in Son 4. I'm from SMK Common Ipoh Pera. Thank you. And next we have Tiffany. Hi everyone. My name is Tiffany. I'm in Form 4 this year and I'm from SMK Common Ipoh. Okay, thank you so much. Next we have Michelle. Hello, my name is Michelle. I'm in Form 4 and I am from SNK Convent Ipoh Pera. Thank you so much. Next we have uh, Nurse Sophia Rina. Hello everyone. My name is Nurse Sophia Rina Hanif and Nurse and I am currently studying my fifth year in SNK Convent Ipoh Pera. Okay, thank you so much. And uh, last but not least we have Yarzi Shira. Hi, my name is Yashira. Um you can also call me Yazi or Yash. I'm also from from 5 and I'm from SAK Com Convent Ipoh. All right, thank you so much. And are you ready for our lesson for today? Give me a thumbs up if you are. You look a little nervous. Hopefully the the uh, topic is not too difficult, but obviously I think it won't be with the uh, guidance from Puan A. And uh, before we begin, again what we're going to do is we're going to take a short break and we'll be back to you for Success SPM 2021. Dede TV 
KPM Didik TV KPM Didik TV KPM As a literature student, I'm able to expand my vocab. Older books in particular might contain language that is unfamiliar to many readers. By engaging with a variety of literature books, I get to learn new words and phrases. For those learning a new language, literature is one of the best ways to improve their skills. I love learning literature so much because it teaches me a lot of history. Furthermore, I can also learn about the poems written back from 200 years ago. And I am able to learn things that I am not able to learn in any other classes. I do recommend literature for other students to learn because it is so much fun, it gives us so much knowledge and it is very beneficial for your future. I took English literature uh, because EL is fun to learn. Uh, we can act, recite poems in class and also we do lots of projects related to the syllabus. And it's also fun because we get to watch a lot of movies and documentaries. Uh, watching movies and documentaries help us to understand cultures around the world and help us to become a better global citizen. I would like to recommend anyone out there take, uh, take up English literature because it challenges your mind to think critically in a global school. Thank you! I love English literature because it is a fun subject to learn. By reading the short stories, the poems and the drama texts, I'm able to learn about the different cultures and histories not only in Malaysia but also from other countries. Besides that, English literature has also taught me to become a better person. I'm able to think critically and have a deeper analysis about a certain topic without only just looking at the surface value. I'm also able to improve my thinking and writing skill as I'm able to write a good analysis based on the topic given. Didik TV KPM Welcome once again, you are now watching Success SPM 2021 Together with me, Sean Siren and also our expert for today, Puan A Who will be going through with us English literature for the topic Short Story Turning 30 by Min Fong Ho So over to you, Puan A uh, Ladies and gentlemen, we are here for Success SPM 2021 and as uh, was mentioned earlier, we're looking specifically at a short story titled Turning 30. Yes. But before that, a quick review, a quick revision for the six lovely ladies over there and all of you at home. When we look at section A or prose, the pupils taking this paper actually have the option of studying the clay marble, which is a novel, or study, studying the lost king, which is another novel, or studying six short stories. So we are here today specifically to look at one short story. Okay. And then what we're going to look at specifically is a, the A question there, which is an excerpt question valued at 15 marks wow okay, okay so we know where we're going today yes right i'm sure those of you who have begun reading studying mm -hmm. prose with your teachers these short stories or their titles are completely familiar to you there are these titles written by chua ko yi we have embracing your shadow thieving daughter as well as sambal without anchovies also, we have by Min Fong Ho, Turning 30, Birds of Paradise, as well as The Winter Hibiscus. Okay. So, what we're doing is we're zooming in, Turning 30. Okay. However, before we go into the text, Turning 30 by Min Fong Ho, excerpt-based question, obviously, some revision needed. What is this story about? Right? What happens in the story? What happens at the beginning of the story? If I could ask maybe Esther to answer and help me out. Could Esther there tell me? A, there was a lady who is suspecting their own mate that she stole their camera. Correct. Great hmm. answer. Okay. So 
at the beginning of the story itself, there seems to be a theft. A crime has been committed. And the one accused of stealing is a maid by the name of Rosa, a Filipino maid who works in the Tan household. Her own employer, Beverly, she feels very sure that it was indeed Rosa who did it. All right. Okay? So that's how the story begins. Now, can I throw another question maybe to Michelle? Can Michelle do me a favour and name me the four major characters in this text? Uh, yes, teacher. Um, the main characters are Rosa, the Filipino maid. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have Beverly and Aliong, which is um, Beverly's husband, and the old one, which is um, Aliong's mother. Correct. Fantastic. So, quick look, everyone. The story begins when we meet Rosa, the Filipino maid. Mm -hmm. Why is the story centered around her? She is accused of stealing a video camera that belongs to her employer. Okay. Who is the one suspicious of her, highly suspicious of her? It is Beverly. All right? And she is very sure, without considering circumstantial evidence or solid proof, it must be her. Oh. She must have been the one to do it. Okay. And then you have the old one, who is in actual fact Beverly's mother-in-law. Mm -hmm. right? She lives with them and she is the mother to Ah Leong or Leon. All right? All right. Very unique there. Mm -hmm. His mother would call him Ah Leong, but his wife would only refer to him as Leon. I see. Yeah, very <laughs> cute there. Okay. All right, and Leon there is the head of the household. Mm -hmm. And he is, by profession, a successful lawyer. Okay, so we've got all that covered. Now we have to try to understand what actually happened. All right, why was there such a big deal with this missing camera? And for that, maybe I could get Tiffany to help me. All right, maybe Tiffany could tell me what was the issue with this missing camera? Why was it so important? Um, to me, it seems that it was really important because Beverly prioritizes his husband's birthday party. So that's why she wanted it so desperately. Correct. Very good. So now we're digging a little deeper. We're not only investigating or merely investigating something that's gone missing, we are looking into the why. Why was it so important for the camera to be returned to Beverly? Right? Beverly could not find the video camera and it was absolutely essential to have that because in her mind, she was planning her husband's upcoming 30th birthday party. I think you might have already thought about it, Sean. Why is the title of this short story Turning 30? I was just about to ask that. Right, earlier, yes. so it's not just about numbers because we are going to learn a little bit more about kindness and compassion later on. So, what's number one priority for Beverly at the moment? She wants to make sure the birthday party is a success, that everyone who attends celebrates not only her husband's birthday, but celebrates the success that her husband has achieved. All right, so this is, to everyone out there who knows this story, this was a clear indication of how Beverly planned a grand celebration. She wasn't about to let this missing video camera get in her way. Okay, so Rosa's crime apparently was to take the video camera did she really do it? Can somebody answer? Maybe Yazi. Did she really do it? And why did she do it? Rosa stole the camera because she was desperate to sell it and use that money. Okay, it's not getting any better. Uh, probably we'll give you some time to correct your microphone. Probably, uh, point A, you could choose someone else. Correct. But I heard what Yazi tried to say. Yazi okay. was trying to say that but, uh, Rosa's priority at that time was to rescue her family. Uh -huh. She did it out of desperation. She did take the video camera. Oh. But she had been 
put into a tough situation. Okay. And I guess what comes to mind, maybe that saying desperate times call for desperate, desperate measures. measures. All right. We are told that uh, Rosa has a family in the Philippines. And what has happened is every single cent sent back to the Philippines has been spent, all spent. The husband has irresponsibly spent all the money and now there is the danger of having the house taken away, confiscated by the bank. Oh no. Yes. And because of that, she saw an opportunity to rescue her family by taking that video camera and pawning it. Hmm. Okay. okay. Yeah. So that, that's where the story begins. We realise that Beverly accused Rosa, mm -hmm. and then we learn of Rosa's actual circumstances that led to the theft. Okay. A theft, true, mm -hmm. it is a crime that she committed, but there were these mitigating circumstances that led her to take what did not belong to her, what actually belonged to her employers, right? So, I wonder if we can read through this together, ladies, and see whether we agree, all right? When we look at Beverly, Beverly clearly suspected Rosa of taking the video camera, of being the thief, as she felt they were beneath her, all right? She had little sympathy towards Rosa specifically and the poor generally. Also, if you look at the old one, you find that those who have read the story, she's very different from Beverly. Now, who can tell me that reason why? Can somebody answer? Maybe. Sof Sophia, are you okay? Tell me the difference between the old one and Beverly. Why she could treat Rosa well. Maybe because of the way Oma perceives Rosa in general. Like she understands Rosa's situation more than Beverly. Great, yes. great answer. <laughs> great, great answer, answer indeed, even I'm though she sounded hoping, a bit I'm always hoping here. the girls can tell me that the old one is able to understand Rosa's situation. Mm -hmm. Because in actual fact, the text does highlight the old one being a single mother raising Aliong. So she had been poor once before. Mm -hmm. She had struggled to raise her son all by herself. Yeah. She clearly understands and can empathize with what Rosa is going through. So that's why it says there, Ahma understood the hardship of the poor. When we have been in their shoes, so to speak, I always ask the students, what is the difference between sympathy and empathy? Yep. To just feel sorry that she has lost the house, for example, mm -hmm. that would merely be sympathy. But in the case of the old one, you find in the text, she actually goes beyond. She actually feels, okay, I will help you. I understand what you're going through. Mm -hmm. those, of who know, those of you who know the story, you will remember that the old one actually pawned her jade bracelet. Oh. She sacrificed her jade bracelet mm -hmm. and with the money that she could raise, she actually returned or attempted to return the video camera back in its place. I Clearly, see. right? A difference yeah. between how Beverly looked at Rosa. Mm -hmm. You find that the old one and Beverly clearly do not see the world the same way. That's true. Yeah. All right? Then you have Ah Leong or Leon. Mm -hmm. All right? As a lawyer, you find that in the text, he realizes later what had happened. First, he says, it's all about justice. Ama, you should not have helped. It's like being an accomplice, isn't it? Yeah. Why did you do this? Why did you help her? But then later, he realizes, oh, she had her circumstances. And these were the overwhelming reasons why she had to do what she did. The choice is then put to Leon, what shall I do? Shall I report her or shall I help 
Rosa. What do you think? Well, that seems to be a, a quite quite a, a difficult position to put in because uh, one way to put it is that it's either he cites his mom either or he cites his, his wife. Yeah, but these so, are both women you love. Oh yes, no. exactly. How would you choose? These are the women you live with. <laughs> what do I do? All right. Yeah. So, in actual fact, in the text, Leon realizes we must always, whenever we can, show compassion mm -hmm. to others. The smallest act of kindness can always go a long, a long way. way. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. And so we've got to the reactions of the three characters here. All right. Um, so actually, I would like to go a bit more deeper and ask, um, I, I mean, because I haven't read this story, right? So um, how does the story kind of end in a way? Or I mean, because we have already reached to the part where uh, obviously from the start, the story begins with uh, Rosa, or the, the case that Rosa was uh, suspe uh, sus suspicious, nine, uh, no, uh, she was suspected of, that's the word, yeah, suspected of stealing uh, that video camera. Um, and that suspicion was done by Beverly and obviously through the story itself we find out that she actually did because of these circumstances and uh, how does this story actually end? Asking me or asking uh, the girls? Okay, um, can probably I can, ask, uh, <laughs> I can ask them, uh, whoever is online right now maybe you could give me a, a description, a short description of what would happen towards the end What happened in the end ladies? Maybe Esther can help um, Yes teacher the lady, um, teacher, which lady are you talking about? What Is finally it happened? Girl? What finally happened at the ending of the story, Esther? Um, in the end, uh, Rosa didn't get reported mm. by them, and Aliong understands her situation Correct. and hide it from his wife. Great, fantastic oh. answer. So that was a spoiler for Sean. Now he knows the <laughs> ending. Of I couldn't the wait. I had to know. Story. I had to right? know. I I, I'm not good with cliffhangers. Correct. Yeah. So he finally realized with age comes wisdom. Mm -hmm. And with wisdom, he realized to be kind to others included helping his own Filipino maid, Rosa. Ultimately, he kept it a secret, hid it from his wife helped the mother put the video camera back in its place. Mm -hmm. Beverly, in the end, ladies and gentlemen, was none the wiser. Means that she never knew she whatever didn't know. happened. Ta-da! Oh, wow. That, I think, that also is something uh, not dangerous, but something that's very difficult for her husband to do to keep something this big. I mean, it can be big, can be small. It depends on how you look at it. Yeah, uh, from, uh, from his wife. So I think it's a very interesting story indeed. And there's a lot that we can learn. Aside from compassion, I think it's also in... Um, uh, there are times where we would have to tell lies. Yeah, we would have to tell lies in order to ensure... Uh, for, for example, this in this case would be the household. Uh, the peace for it is to be, kept yes, in correct. the household. Yes, correct. the peace is kept. Uh, but nevertheless, it's not an excuse for us to tell lies uh, in general itself. Yes. All right. Um, all right. So I think um, it's been quite a good explanation regarding the reactions and also going to the uh, <laughs> to the end because I couldn't wait. But what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to take some time. I'm going to take a short break and be back to you for for success SPM 2021. back for success SPM 2021 together me Sean Steven and also Puan A for today's topic it'll be short story uh, with the title of what I'll be turning in 10 years from now turning 30 by Min Fong Ho I'm actually dreaming I'm already more than 30 but that's fine let's continue with our lesson Puan A all right ladies and gentlemen if we were to believe the words of Sean <laughs> He's got many years to go before this birthday party comes. We earlier took a quick look at the plot and the main characters. 
we understand the text rather thoroughly now. But for today's lesson, we are ultimately going to look at an excerpt question. As I mentioned earlier, an excerpt question following our literature in English or Kursu Sastraan Inggris 2206 format should have or contain a reading passage followed by a question. To answer this question would be to try your best to earn 15 marks, right? It's a yes. 15 mark question. It's a reading extract or passage coming from the text. If you can see what I've got there on screen, you can see that I've also put the note there. It comes from the text itself or the textbook, page 35 and 36. In this particular extract, you have a conversation taking place between Rosa, clearly trying to persuade her employer, Beverly, of her predicament, trying to explain the challenges she's going through, hoping that the employer would be able to give her an advance in her pay. As stated in the extract, may I borrow some money from you? All right? Three months pay and I will work without pay for four, no, five months. So clearly Rosa is trying to persuade her employer to assist her in her time of need. In other words, reaching out for help. Yes. What happens is, we've got this question, all right? And the question reads, what are your thoughts and feelings about Beverly at this moment in the story? All right, one more time. What are your thoughts and feelings about Beverly at this moment in the story? This is the question that will get you 15 marks. The first thing you need to do is understand the requirements of the task. And first and foremost, normally I would ask my pupils, never, never forget what is there at the bottom. Do not look beyond the excerpt. All right, the question says, at this moment in the story. So your response shouldn't be overly influenced by other events that have happened or other events that have not taken place yet. All right, so this is an analysis task, so to speak. You're analyzing a specific extract. What are you told to do? How I feel, that's the question. How do you feel about Beverly? Not Rosa, but Beverly, okay? How did she act? Okay, how did she respond to Rosa? And do you agree with her? actions and what about the language all right that was used in that conversation involving rosa and her employer what did you understand from that so that's the first 30 seconds you get the question this is what you get to think of all right also never forget i've mentioned before when we answer we must always remember our essay needs to have the four assessment objectives. Your response is a comprehensive response that touches on assessment objectives one, two, three, and four. Right? That's a slight misunderstanding, I guess, that is commonly made with students who look at the question mm -hmm. and they say, oh, it's asking me what I think. And yes. therefore, my response is entirely going to be about how I feel. Do I like what she did? Do I dislike or disagree with how she reacted? So no, ladies, always remember, you need to ensure that your response reflects all four assessment objectives. Meaning to say, A01, how much do I know about the text? Okay. The plot, okay? what happened first, what happened then, which is what, in actual fact, we covered earlier. Yeah. And then AO2, the ability to analyze, to infer, to 
get deep into the text and understand underlying meaning. Right. As we mentioned earlier, the video camera to Beverly is not an object, merely a thing that she can report to the police about. No, to her, she needs it to make her plan successful, isn't it? Because ultimately, she is planning a grand celebration yeah. to celebrate her husband's 30th birthday. That's analysis and that's evaluating, that's inferencing there. AO3, our response also needs to ensure that we can explain the effects of language, form, structure. What were the words they used? How did they speak to one another? Okay, that's all AO3. And then of course AO4, a personal and critical response. That's where you actually comment on how Beverly responded to Rosa in that conversation. Okay. So far so good? Good, good. All right. So in yellow and green throughout the next few slides, you will have the question appear, reappear, so that it doesn't leave <laughs> us. Yeah, we're thinking yeah. of what are our thoughts and feelings about Beverly at this moment? And what I have here on screen is these specific lines where Rosa is saying, it was my husband, ma'am. He's smoking the bad drug. So he finished all the money to actually pay for his addiction. And that's why the house is in jeopardy. So what's the issue here? What's the plot point here? The plot point here would be, Rosa is pleading for Beverly's understanding generosity please understand what i'm going through please allow me to work for you free for the next five months please just lend me the money that's why the textual evidence there is important there's even a sense of emotion there because she says to her employer the bank is going to take away the house that's how desperate the situation is where will they live now i don't know ma'am Okay, that's surface level, surface level, all right, knowledge of the literary text supported by textual evidence, all right, that's AO1. All right. Now you've got AO2, all right, our response needs to show a deeper awareness of the content and for this, I actually have, if you can see on screen, parts of the conversation taking place between the two of them, all right, Rosa says, for four years now, I have worked here. And then Rosa tries to say, I've worked here. In just seven more months, ma'am, the house will be paid for. But how does Beverly react? Beverly immediately responds with, but what about the camera, Rosa? What about the video camera? So, clearly we've got to dig deeper, right? Why does Beverly say what she said? Rosa, now feeling defeated, she's trying to now appeal to her employer. She goes further by saying, can I borrow some money from you, ma'am? Please, I need the money now. But how does Beverly respond? Beverly responds by saying, did you or did you not take the camera? Because if you really did, I'm going to report you to the police. And what will happen is they will send you right back to the Philippines. All right. Ladies, come tell me, what was more important to Beverly? Who's going to answer for me? Video <laughs> camera. Sankirtana, you want to try? Give it a try. The video camera. Why, why was the video camera so important to Beverly? She wanted to record the event of Aliyong's 30th birthday. Correct. Very good. So it wasn't just an object, just like I mentioned to you earlier. Yeah. For her, being able to show to the others, Aliyong and I, my husband and I, we now have a successful life. We have made it. That's her ultimate aim. That's why we say exploring text beyond surface meaning.
So you have there not just knowing the text or what happens in the text, but also the ability to explain why these words were said. What does it show in actual fact? It shows that Beverly honestly couldn't care less about Rosa's predicament. Hmm. She has been told, all right, uh, with a lot of details actually, about the situation Rosa is in, yet she only cares about having the video camera back in her possession in time for her husband's 30th birthday party. If you have read the short story, you will know that in her conversation with her husband also, you find Leon isn't as concerned about this birthday party. He yeah. says it's just another birthday. Mm -hmm. But the difference between our Beverly and our Leon is you can see nothing will stop her from successfully organizing this birthday party for her husband. Yes, not All even right? the maid, yeah? I have to show everyone we've made it, mm -hmm. okay? Now, you've got AO3 and AO3 is a quick look about uh, word choice and the tone that the two characters display in this conversation. Beverly is curt, Beverly is impolite and in contrast, Rosa is figuratively speaking already on her knees, hoping that her employer will save her. So she uses words like bad drug, white powder, to implore to her kind, the kindness of her employer. But Beverly responds with harsh words. All right, what does she say? If you're a thief, I'm going to report you. You committed a crime and you'll be sent back. So clearly it's a tense moment, isn't it? Because yes. the employer isn't about to help Rosa at all. So you have devices like repetition being used. When Rosa repeatedly asks and asks, but no assistance is to be provided by Beverly. Okay? Okay. Should we go to the next one? Uh, yes. All right. I think we have AO4, right? All right. We've got AO4. You have been paying attention. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so in AO4, we need to consider all right, our personal and critical response. What is the question again in yellow and in green? Thoughts and feelings about Beverly at this moment in the story. Once again, do not go beyond the extract. Only look at the moment. Which moment are we talking about? The extract looks at the conversation where Rosa, hoping for assistance, is flatly turned down. And Beverly clearly says, I want it back or you're going to be in trouble. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've got uh, one question there. What do you think of the confrontation between Beverly and Rosa? Maybe I could ask one of them, what do they think of Beverly? Okay, sure what do they think of Beverly? Just one quick question. Could I throw it to Michelle? Uh, yes, teacher. Um, I think Beverly is very, um, as much as she's arrogant and very uh, high-ended, mm -hmm. I do understand that she grew up in a very, she grew up very wealthy and had everything already given for her. Mm -hmm. So she can't really sympathize with people who are underprivileged. Correct. I love that response. That clearly shows... She's got a critical response and she knows her text very well. Mm -hmm. All right. She understands the character of Beverly and doesn't immediately lash out. Right. Michelle didn't yeah. immediately say, I don't like her. She was absolutely cruel. How could she be mean? Mm -hmm. Before you say all that, you should try to understand Beverly. And that's exactly the beautiful response that Michelle gave. Thank you for that. Yes, thank you number so two. much, Michelle. But before we go oh, on oh, to oh. question number two, how about we take a short break and be back to you for Success SPM 2021. KPM. Did it? 
TV KPM And we are back for today's subject English literature for the topic of short story uh, Turning 30 by Min Fong Ho Over to you Puan A Thank you Sean uh, Just before we had that quick break we took a look at question 1 and we had a brilliant answer in response which actually took a good look uh, at Beverly as an individual, yes. one who had never suffered, mm -hmm. one who had never led a difficult life. So we are able to see that you should not limit yourself to emotive adjectives. Okay. For example, if a candidate were to say, I am disgusted by her behavior, oh, okay. uh, that's a bit too strong. Yeah. Right. In contrast, I would rather ask my pupils to read the text again and understand the characters better, which was the response we heard earlier. For someone who has lived a life of comfort, mm -hmm. for someone who has never been poor, she could not, in actual fact, feel what Rosa was feeling. Yes. And that's exactly what we were looking at earlier. The old one being a single mother raising Leon on all by herself. She could immediately empathize with the predicament that Rosa was going through. Right? Right. Now we're looking at question number two. Do you agree with how Beverly handled the situation as an employer? Your options upon considering this crime has been committed. Considering the fact that Rosa has taken something from your household, what would you do? All right? Would you say, I agree with Beverly's actions? Okay, what do we think? We're going to ask someone, right, Sean? Yeah, I think uh, I haven't heard from Esther in a while. Maybe Esther could help us out with that. Could you repeat the question one more time? Esther can look at question number two. Okay. How did Beverly handle the situation? Did she do the right thing? Um, yes, teacher. Um, she did not do the right thing. Oh. Because she couldn't, couldn't understand her situation. And as Michelle said that she came from a wealthy family, so she never has been too hardship. I think she should handle it with an understanding mind and tend to hear more better from her situation and try to help her out, out too. That's all. Thank you. Brilliant answer. And in actual fact, that answer leads us to the third question, right? Yeah. When you look at the text, in actual fact, you're also looking generally at life itself. How should we talk to others when we are dealing with a tense situation? Yes, yes, we could see that Beverly was upset. Yes, she was unhappy because she clearly was suspicious of Rosa. But still, she could have been gentler in her choice of words. She could have reached out to better understand the predicament that Rosa was in. Mm -hmm. So generally speaking, when we are dealing with a tense situation, we would explode. That's oh, yes. the natural reaction, isn't it? And yeah. in actual fact, it is so much more difficult to remain calm. Yes. To just take a deep breath and understand that person better, understand why in actual fact this has happened. All right. Now we're going to look at two last questions for today. Question number one. What do you think of the relationship between Beverly and Rosa? What are these two women like with each other? Maybe I could get Yazi to answer quickly. Yazi, what do you think? I think the relationship between Beverly and Rosa could be better. Mm. They could try to understand each other a little bit more. Good, good. Beverly should try to understand Rosa. Rosa, likewise, tries to understand what her employee is like. Very good. Now, great question there, number two. You know, at the end of the story, Leon or Ah Leong actually hides the fact that Rosa took the video camera, hides the secret completely from his wife, effectively rescuing not just Rosa, 
but also the family and the house back in the Philippines. So how is Ahliong different from Beverly? Who's going to answer for me, Sean? Um, maybe I could hear for, from Tiffany, if you may. Okay. Um, in my opinion, I think Ahliong is different from his wife because unlike Beverly, he is someone who is humble, mm. compassionate, kind, and has a better, more understanding towards the situation. So yeah, that's my answer. <laughs> that's a great answer. Thank you. If you look at the text, ladies and gentlemen, the birthday boy, Leon. All right. What did he realize when his mother confronted him? All right. His mother said to him, you have so much. You have earned so much. You are doing so well. Yet you cannot do this small thing for your mate. Yeah. Can't you look beyond what you have all around you? Look at how others are doing. And she mentions one important point in the short story. Mm -hmm. The old one mentions you need to show that you have Leong Sam. I named you after Leong Sam. That's why he's called Ah Leong. Okay. And to have Leong Sam, in actual fact, is to be able to show kindness and compassion towards others. Yeah. So he was frozen there for perhaps a good two minutes. Mm -hmm. He was thinking about his career. Yes. I am a lawyer who upholds justice. What is the idea of justice? A crime should be punished. But what does the mother say? The mother says, it's not all about justice in life. Try to understand what the person is going through. Show kindness towards others. And that, my dear ladies and gentlemen, is why at the end of the short story, Leon rescues Rosa and is such a different employer in contrast to his wife, Beverly. Wow. Mm. Thank this you for story, all those answers, yes. ladies. Thank you so much again uh, to the, all of you who are online. We have uh, Tiffany, Yazi, we also have Esther, Michelle, uh, San, uh, Sankar Tana, as well as Nora Sophia Arena uh, for actually giving us all those answers and also being very participative. And of course, to Puan E for giving all these insights. And I actually know that uh, this story is just it's, it's so much more deeper than we actually realize and it can actually be pretty humbling uh, to find out that even no matter how successful you are, it's very important to take a step back and realize the things that you have and could be taken for granted when you're in such a position. And again, the moral value from this story is that we should always try to have compassion, try to help other people when we are, uh, when we are able to because no matter what it is, we are after all humans all from the same uh, human race and it is good to uh, actually look out for others as well. Thank you once again to Puan A and for those of you watching at home as well, hopefully this uh, lesson today is very beneficial to you. We'll see you in our next episode at Success SPM 2021. Have a great day ahead. Bye. Bye. Dede TV KPM. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Uh, my name is Dalila binti Aziz Arasa, and my daughter Sofia Arisa binti Muzami goes to School of Menengah Asunta in Petaling Jaya, and. Um, to all uh, class of 2021, um I would like to highlight uh, maybe one issues that relates to our current situation as we face the COVID-19 pandemic outbreak since 2020. The issues of um, stress, how children these days are taking the conditions, uh, the outbreak, um, feeling very stressful in the education. So um, we would like to, I would like to mention here that we all should be thankful that um, we are in the era of technologies. So you still can receive your education in tactful and um, be thankful that you still have your families, your friends, your teachers. Um, ensure you have, uh, take care of yourself. Uh, comply or adhere to all the SOPs and ensure that you live um, in uh, or, or 
basically ensure that you have a healthy relations at home, uh, the support system that you need uh, to endure your journey in the upcoming SPM.